Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to find derivatives using the power rule. If you like the video, then please hit the like button and I'd be delighted and honoured if you'd subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's go over to the whiteboard. The power rule simplifies the way we take derivatives of polynomials. In the video I made on limits and derivatives, we looked at the derivative of a function f of x or f prime being the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. This allowed us to find the gradient of a tangent to a function f of x. The good news is there is an easier way of finding derivatives. This is called the power rule and the power rule simplifies the way we take derivatives of polynomials. So let's say we have a function f of x and it's equal to x to the power n where n is not equal to zero. The derivative of f of x or f prime x is then equal to n multiplied by x to the power of n minus one. So let's see how this can be applied to a real polynomial. So we have a function f of x is equal to x to the power of six plus two x squared minus x cubed plus 2x plus 3. We can apply the power rule to each of the terms individually to get the complete derivative. Let's take x to the power of 6 first. For this term, n is equal to 6. So according to the power rule, we multiply x by 6 and decrement the power by 1. So we get 6 times x to the power of 6 minus 1, which is equal to 6x to the power of 5. So let's now start building up the derivative of f of x or f prime x. So the first term we can put in is 6x to the power of 5. Now let's look at the second term, 2x squared. n in this case is 2, so we multiply the x term by 2. It's already multiplied by 2, so that becomes 2 times 2 multiplied by x, and we decrement the power by 1. So it's x to the power of 2 minus 1. This equals 4, because we have 2 times 2, multiplied by x to the power of 1, which is just 4x. We can now add this second term, so plus 4x, to the derivative of f of x, so f prime x. So currently we have f prime x is equal to 6x to the power of 5 plus 4x. Now let's take the third term, minus x cubed, where n is 3 in this case. Let's, th let's think of this term as having a coefficient of minus 1. So applying the power rule, we multiply this coefficient by n, which in this case is 3. We then multiply that by x to the power of n minus 1. So n minus 1 in this case is 3 minus 1. So that gives us minus 3x squared. So we can now add this third term to the derivative of f of x, or f prime x. So once we've added this, f prime x is now 6 times x to the power of 5 plus 4x minus 3x squared. Now let's look at the term 2x in our function f of x. Now in this term, although you can't see a power of x, x is actually to the power of 1, so n is equal to 1. So this time we multiply the coefficient of x, which is 2, by n, which is 1, and then we multiply that by x to the power of 1 minus 1. So 2 times 1 gives us 2, and x to the power of 1 minus 1 gives us x to the power of 0. Now anything to the power of 0 is 1, so we're left with the value of 2. So let's add this latest term to the derivative of f of x. So now we have the derivative of f of x, or f prime, is equal to 6x to the power of 5 plus 4x minus 3x squared plus 2. So now let's take a look at our final term, which is 3. Now 3 is a constant, so it's, it's not multiplied by x. So when we apply the power rule to a constant, the derivative is always 0. So the, the derivative of 3, the constant with respect to x, is 0. As we have no further terms to add, that completes the derivative of our function f of x. So the complete derivative of f of x, or f prime, is equal to 6 times x to the power of 5 plus 4 times x minus 3x squared plus 
2. Now let's see how we can apply the power rule to negative powers. So this time our function is x to the power of minus 2 plus 3 times x to the power of minus 4. So we can apply the power rule in exactly the same way as we did before. So let's take our first term which is x to the power of minus 2. So in this case n is minus 2. So if we think of x to the power of minus 2 as having a coefficient of 1, we multiply the coefficient by n. So we get minus 2 times 1 multiplied by x. And this time we decrement the power by minus 1. So the power is minus 2. So if we subtract minus 1 from minus 2, we get a minus 3. So if we put the whole thing together, we get minus 2 times 1, which is minus 2, multiplied by x to the power of minus 3. So if we now start building up our derivative of f of x, so f prime x. So if we add our first term in, we have f prime x is equal to minus 2 multiplied by x to the power of minus 3. So if we now look at our next term, 3x to the power of minus 4. In this case, n is equal to minus 4. So if we now apply the power rule, we multiply the coefficient of x, which in this case is 3, by minus 4, which is n, and then multiply that by x, and we decrement the power of x by 1. So the power of x is 4, so we decrement that by 1. So we are left with x to the power of minus 5. So if we put all that together, we have minus 4 times 3, which gives us minus 12, multiplied by x to the power of minus 5. If we now add this term into our derivative, this is our final term. So we now have the derivative of f of x or f prime x, which is equal to minus 2 times x to the power of minus 3 minus 12 times x to the power of minus 5. So let's now look at another example of using the power rule to differentiate a function. This time, let's look at a function which has got fractional exponents. So our function on f of x is equal to x to the power of a half plus 2 times x to the power of a quarter plus x to the power of minus one third. So let's take our first term. We have x to the power of a half. So in this case, n is equal to a half. And if we think of the coefficient of x as being 1, we have n, which is a half, multiplied by 1, multiplied by x, and we need to decrement the power of x by 1. So the power of x is a half, and we need to decrement that by 1, which leaves minus a half. So putting all that together, we have a half times 1, which is a half, multiplied by x to the power of minus a half. So that is the same as x to the power of minus a half divided by 2. So we can add this first term into the derivative of f of x. So we have f prime of x is equal to x to the power of minus half divided by 2. So our next term to differentiate using the power rule is 2 times x to the power of a quarter. So in this case, n is equal to 1 quarter. And the coefficient of x in this term is 2. So we multiply n, which is a quarter, by the coefficient of x, which is 2. And then we multiply that by x and decrement its power by 1. So its power n is equal to a quarter minus 1. So a quarter minus 1 leaves us minus 3 quarters. So putting all that together, we have 2 times a quarter, which leaves us with a half, multiplied by x to the power of minus 3 quarters which is the same as x to the power of minus 3 quarters divided by 2. So if we add this latest term into the derivative of f of x, so f prime x is now x to the power of minus half divided by 2 plus x to the power of minus 3 quarters over 2. And last but not least, the final term we have to differentiate is x to the power of minus one third. So in this case, n is equal to minus one third, and the coefficient of x is one. So we multiply n by the coefficient of the x term, so we have minus one third times one, and then we multiply that by x, and we decrement its power by one. So its power is minus a third, so we subtract minus one and get 
minus four thirds. So if we put all that together, we have minus a third times one, which is minus a third, multiplied by x to the power of minus four thirds. So that is equal to minus x to the power of minus four thirds divided by three. So adding this last term in, we have the derivative of f of x or f prime x, which is equal to x to the power of minus a half divided by two plus x to the power of minus three quarters divided by two minus x to the power of minus four thirds divided by three.